Back in 2011, I bought a Toyota Prius, and as it turned out, it had a little digital gauge that would show you how economically you were driving at any given moment. And at the time, that was a pretty big revelation because, of course, I'd come from pretty much all gas-guzzling cars at the time, right? Or at least not hybrid-type cars that had a focus on economy, fuel economy, and so forth. And so it also had regenerative braking, although nothing like today's regenerative braking in Teslas. But anyway, it was very interesting over over the years of owning that car, I actually found that I became much more attuned to and aware of how my driving impacted my fuel economy. And so ultimately, it made me a better driver in terms of acceleration, deceleration, you know, not having to brake too hard, trying to stay a reasonable distance behind people so that I wouldn't have to brake or accelerate too much. And I think that combined with biking, where you're really, really aware of that because, you know, of course, you have to do everything with your own muscles. I think those two things made me realize how to drive and also bike in the most economical fashion possible. What's interesting now is that I think that Tesla both has the ability and the opportunity to teach us all to drive much better overall. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So the inspiration for this episode actually came from the last one, which is linked above if you haven't seen it, and also from Discord discussions about that from my Patreon patrons and me. And what we were specifically talking about was the new beta, quote, button that is supposed to come out September 24th and that you can then request access to the new beta software from Tesla. But in order to do that, you have to then grant Tesla the ability to look at your driving individually for a seven day period. I don't know if it continues past seven days, but at least for a seven day period so that you get the thumbs up that you're a good driver. In our Discord discussions, however, we started talking about what if Tesla actually enabled this for people around the world who drive Teslas, right? They don't need to necessarily be in California or the United States or requesting the full self-driving beta. What if Tesla just released this ability to use their Tesla insurance calculator that they clearly have that works in California now and soon in Texas and I guess relatively soon in New York. I, I hope it comes to Georgia one of these days soon too. But anyway, to be able to use that software to allow drivers to look at how they're driving and to gauge how they drive and to become better drivers. So how would this all work? Well, the first thing is, of course, this is not original with Tesla or anything. I've seen Progressive. I think State Farm has it. I'm pretty sure Allstate has it. There are many insurance companies that have these little you know modules that you put into your car that allows these companies to look at your driving ability and then they can give you you know better rates I don't know I've never really been excited about doing that I'm not super excited about Tesla looking at my particular driving either but you know the consequences are that I get access to the beta so of course I'm gonna let them do it but for the most part I'm not super happy about that and, and again I know that's a little bit weird to say that because I would be really excited to have Tesla insurance but basically if I try to get Tesla insurance, that would be a counter offer versus something that I already have, right? So what I'm not going to do is I'm insured with State Farm Insurance right now. I'm not going to go from my current insurance plan to having them install something in the hopes that it gets better because it might get worse, right? But if on the other hand, uh, Tesla, you know, says, hey, we'd like to look at your driving ability so that we can then give you an insurance quote, that's fine, right? Then what they do is they take the information back and if they give me a better quote, I can go with them. If they give me a worse quote, I just stay with where I am. So that's the difference in my mind. So that's how it works out. I'm not already committed to Tesla insurance. If I was, and then they said, hey, now we want to look at your data, I'd be like, mm, right? But if they've already quoted me a lower rate than somebody else, then that just means I have to stay at that ability. So anyway, how does this actually work? Well, insurance is a statistics-based industry, right? What they do is they say 56-year-old male who's married, who has children, and who drives this expensive of a car is this likely to get into an accident and get a ticket. They actually don't really care necessarily about tickets directly, but tickets are an indicator that you might get into an accident. All they really care about is whether you're gonna plow your car into the back of somebody else and it's gonna cost them a whole bunch of money. So that's the statistics. What Tesla has the ability to do with their cars, of course, is they've got cameras, they've got accelerometers, and they've got 
interior cameras that can even look at you as a driver. I assume they're going to allow you to do that. And man, I have a bad tendency to look down when I'm at a stoplight at my phone. I'm going to have to like put my phone away <laughs> for the next couple of weeks so that I can't, I'm not tempted to look at it while they're evaluating my driving. But anyway, they have access to all of these sensors and all of this data, and then they ship it back and they look at your statistics versus everybody else's, but they can be incredibly more granular. Think how, you know, generalized it is to say 56 year old male, married, has kids, drives this expensive of a car. That's only four or five data points that they're working with. And so of course, you know, the best that State Farm can do is just come up with a guess. And of course, experience too, because I haven't gotten, knock on wood, <laughs> I haven't gotten any accidents recently. So, you know, so they're gonna lower my insurance rates because I personally have given them evidence that I hopefully am a relatively good driver. But Tesla, on the other hand, can be extremely precise about this and they can be given, I don't know, how fast you accelerate. I know at Green the Only has, has produced some evidence of what it is that they look at. Tesla, I know, looks at how fast you accelerate off the line, which is unfortunate it's an EV car and it's fun to go fast <laughs> just to accelerate in a straight line it's not that big a deal but anyway more importantly in my mind is how much time you spend following one second behind uh, the person in front of you or three seconds behind them and other things so they have many many more data points than a company like State Farm or Allstate or something has so anyway all of this data gets sent back to Tesla's mothership and it gets run through an insurance program that figures out again using statistics but using much more fine-grained statistics it looks looks at you versus other people who drive similar to you. It figures out how you know likely it is you're going to be in an accident or cost the company money or something like that. And then it figures out what your insurance cost should be. But here's the twist. What Tesla can do is they can actually open this up to everyone, not just those who are being insured. So what they could do is if you choose again, of course, because you have to give them access to your data. If you chose to give Tesla access to your data, what they could do is they could go and they could process that and then they could send you back indications about how good of a driver you are, right? And they can do it very, very specifically. I hear from the people who are insured in California that they kind of give you like, you know, daily reports or something. And even better if they had the extra processing power, and I don't know if they would do that, but maybe they could dumb it down a little bit. They could simplify it a little bit, but actually run it on board on your own computer. So just like that Prius that I had in 2010 or 2011 when I purchased it, it would have some sort of like an indicator or something, right? And I think I'd said that previously, but what it would do is it'd be like, oh, good driver right now, but then you like got too close behind the guy in front of you, so it went back to like, you know, medium driver and then poor driver because the uh, autopilot had to like auto break or something and then back to being good again. But what they could do is if that was being interactively displayed in front of you, what it would do would be to encourage you to, of course, keep the needle in the green, right? So again, just a little dis little thing in the corner of the display with a little, you know, red, yellow, green or something, and you wanted to keep the little arrow in the green all the time. So that wouldn't have to do with Tesla's insurance, but it would be using the same calculator because they've already statistically figured out what makes a good driver. So then what you can do is you can have access to that. So, you know, for because of regulatory issues and just because of technological issues, it's unlikely that full self-driving is going to be able to be enabled at level five where you can just, you know, go to sleep in the car for years to come probably. And, you know, again, it might happen in a couple of states in the United States, but then it's going to have to spread around the world for quite a while. But in the meantime, let's say it took five years, just to throw out a number, it took five years for full self-driving level five to be regulated all around the world or in most countries. That means that in the next five years, if Tesla released this good driver, bad driver sort of needle indicator, that people would actually become better drivers because what happens is it's giving you real-time feedback. It's basically like having a driving instructor sitting in the car next to you, right? Going like, oh, bad idea. That was a really bad idea, right? But this is actually very, very scientifically, statistically based and it would allow people to become better drivers even though they don't have access to the full self-driving level four, level five autonomy yet. So that's going to make the world a safer place. So my call to Tesla is you all should figure out how to take your insurance calculator software and if possible, shrink it down so that it will work on the full self-driving computer without taxing it too much because it's got a lot of other stuff that it needs to do. But just a basic thing that every couple of seconds samples how you're driving and gives you a, you know, a good bad indicator because what will happen is you'll train drivers around the 
world to become better drivers. And if you do that, these better drivers will be safer, get in fewer accidents, and cause fewer fatalities. And that's a pretty amazing thing. So Tesla, I'm calling to you. In a software update, you should enable something like this that people can choose to use, and you'll help people to become better drivers, become safer, and to save lives. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and enjoyable. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. Again, this episode came out of Discord discussions, so there's the benefit of being a Patreon patron. You get to have access to not just me, but a whole bunch of other very, very smart people. So definitely check out the link in the description if you're interested in joining us. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks. And now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget that we are Amazon affiliates. If you check in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for whatever you want to buy helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.